Okay, so I want to talk about um. Just I need a second here. Okay, yeah, I want to talk about. <clears throat> I call them, in the course, I call them like the, the big ideas, the big beliefs, the, the big concepts in the course. For me, the path has looked like, okay, I, I'll understand the concepts in my mind. But until they drop into an experience, it's, it's um, <clears throat> shallow it's shallow until it drops in as an experience and then the deep dive happens so one of those things happened this morning i all of a sudden could feel the experience it was really gentle and it was really soft it was really subtle um but the it dropped into the experience of nothing is happening nothing has ever happened And for me, when it goes from a you know an understanding a concept in the mind to an experience, it's like whoa, wow, okay, there it is, okay. And this was everything leading up to it. So this morning I come downstairs, and <clears throat> I see something on the floor at the stairs. I'm actually coming down the stairs, and I see little bits of chunks of things I don't really know what they are I mean the dogs get into things and they they chew stuff up right and I look down uh, at the bottom you know, the floor past the bottom step and I I see this thing there and I'm like oh is that one of their bones like what is that and I get closer and I realize it's one of those um fly traps the kind that it's a little cylinder thing and you you pull it out and there's a, a sticky um, plastic thing that you, you yeah, it's like a ribbon and you pull it out and then it comes with a tack and you give, you stick it to the ceiling and it collects flies and fruit flies and that kind of thing, right? So this is what's on the floor, but it's only out like maybe four inches. So it, I couldn't really tell what it was. And then when I picked it up and I saw it, I was like, Oh, okay. So here's the interesting thing about that. I'm actually triggered by these things. Andrew first pulled them out maybe, I want to say last summer. So like sometime in the summer, um, what year is it? It's 2020. Okay, so, so sometime in the summer of 2019, last summer. <laughs> and he pulled them out. And they came in a pack of like three or four or six or I don't know. And I'm looking at them. And this like guttural, visceral uh, thing comes out. And it's funny because I don't ever remember having them around growing up or anything. But the, I have this visual in my mind of what they look like. And there's a boatload of judgment there. And I just, so I started expressing in that moment. And I was like, oh my God, these are such like white trash. Could it be any more like the bugs and the hanging and how they look, there's chunks of flies stuck to them. And like, to me, it was just so ghetto white trash that I, I mean, we might as well have a couch on the front lawn and tires. And I, I had this harsh, harsh judgment come up and I didn't even know it was there. So something as simple as a fly catcher is triggering these judgments, these beliefs in my mind that I didn't even know was there. So fast forward to this morning, and I see this in the floor. And clearly the dogs have chewed on it. There's bits missing, there's white fur stuck to it, and it's, you know, whatever. And so this is what happens for me. One, I start to think, okay, what what is this sticky stuff made out of? The dogs were eating it. Um, is it poisonous? Lola's pregnant, you know, like what, what the hell, you know? And the other thing that happened was 
blaming Marie. I was upstairs. And I come down and, you know, there's this idea that, in my mind, that, well, if you're with the dogs, you should be keeping an eye on them. And all of my stuff, those my beliefs around that, come from all the kids that I have been around with my whole life. All the babies I've taken care of. All the toddlers I've taken care of. All the five-year-olds I've taken care of. And I, so through this experience, I got to see that Christine has this deep, deep ingrained reaction and responses to little people and Rocco and Lola, apparently. Because my only frame of reference for taking care of Rocco and Lola are kids because I have no dog experience. So and that's what the Holy Spirit tells me to do. And I feel like I don't fucking know what to do with these dogs. I don't know how to, like, when they're doing something that's naughty or, you know, whatever. Like, I don't know. With kids, no fucking problem. Give me a room full of kids. No, any age, no problem. Give me two little white fluffers. And I'm like, I don't fucking know. And it's bizarre. It's a bizarre experience. But Holy Spirit keeps, no, no. Lean into the kid thing. This is your frame of reference. You know what to do there. It's the same thing. It's it's so similar. It's so similar. So I didn't see that I have this incredibly deeply ingrained thing where, and it's subconscious. Up until now, it's been subconscious. I scan the room. I scan the room. Where are the kids? I even called the rock on Lola the kids. So where are the kids? What are they doing? Are, have they gotten into something? Have they eaten something? Or what, what are they doing? So it's it's so ingrained in subconscious that that's what I do. So I look around. Oh, there's Rocco. There's Lola. Oh, I see something on the floor. I better go see what it is. You know? That's what you would do with kids. Oh, there's something in their mouth. I can't tell you the times I've taken something out of somebody's mouth, a little one's mouth, or um, they're about to put something in their mouth. It's like, nope. And being on constant alert for that type of thing. And of course, when I worked at Caraway as a TA, when I walk in the classroom, when I'm in the classroom, um, it's not a normal classroom, right? The kids are working on projects. So there's 25 kids all moving around the classroom, constantly moving. Nobody's sitting at desks looking at books, you know, in textbooks. They're building, they're creating. And so I'm co I would constantly scan. Where's everybody? What's everybody doing? Okay, they've got, you know, this kid is holding some cardboard scissors. I'm going to keep an eye on that. This, this kid is holding one of the lizards. I'm going to keep an eye on that. Th this kid is, um, that this kid's got pipe cleaners. That's fine. You know, th so like there's, const there's a constant awareness of what people are doing and checking in with all of them over and over and over again. So that's what I do with the dogs and I didn't even know. And then I, then I saw, because I was seeing this for the first time, the next thing I was being shown was that there's this expectation that everybody else does the same thing. Like Marie should be aware that if you see the dogs playing with something, you just go check to make sure it is actually one of their treats or one of their toys and not something else. And I didn't know that I had that expectation and that I was projecting it onto her. I did not know this and it's been deeply uncomfortable, you know, when this has been coming in and seeing it and realizing it and yeah, cause I, I haven't been paying attention to it. I I've been noticing a discomfort, but I really didn't know what it was. I didn't get it. And I didn't really know that I didn't know what it was until this morning, until this chunk of fucking fly paper trap thing was on the floor. See, there's still a trigger there. Like I'm swearing about it, right? They, yeah, there, there's just something about it. Like I don't want them hanging up in the house. They're, oh, I don't know. They represent something for me much deeper than the judgment of, you know, like, oh, I, I don't know. I don't know. They're just so disgusting. When there's bugs all over them, they're so disgusting. And sometimes the bugs are still alive. They're just stuck in the goo so you can hear them buzzing and moving and trying to get out. It's like, it's, it's some kind of metaphor for something in my mind, I'm sure. There's something sticky in my mind, something gross in my mind, and 
um, I'm stuck in it. And I'm... That's, it's a perfect metaphor. Yeah, there's definitely something sticky in my mind and I'm stuck to it. And I don't like it. So there we go. And then this is what happens. Um, I don't know how many minutes went by, maybe 20 or so. And I see vomit on the floor. And of course, one of the symptoms of, um, you know, puppy labor is vomiting. And I'm like, oh. And Lola's been exhibiting some, you know, approaching labor kind of um, behaviors. Like she started digging. And she hasn't, she hasn't been digging for a couple of months. She hasn't been digging. And she just started all of a sudden. And it's one of the symptoms and of this ball getting rolling and... And so is vomiting. And so I thought, okay, me, you know, Lola's, it's coming closer. And then I see Rocco throw up. And I'm like, oh, okay, Rocco's throwing up. So now this worry is being triggered because if he was eating the fly trap and now he's throwing up, is he sick now? Is he's been poisoned? by this shit in the fly trap and and then Lola throws up and I'm like oh fuck so and then Rocco throws up again and I think it's about a 15 minute window you know so I'm noticing these triggers about everything that I already shared and are the dogs sick now you know so so I'm noticing this worry and it's actually, it's, there's a much deeper thing available to see in this for me, which is loss, this deep, deep trigger of loss. So if I take the opportunity that's being provided and not, not stop at the, oh, I'm angry at the fly paper, the fly trap, and maybe the dogs are poisoned. You know, but I didn't stop there. I was aware that there was a deeper place being offered and it's loss. The awareness that the belief in loss, the, the, the grief of loss is being triggered. Like what if one of them is sick enough that they die or, and Lola's pregnant. So, oh my God. Like, so there are all these beliefs and stuff being triggered. And so I did some research. I went up to my room and I did some research on these fly things. And it turns out they're not toxic. And the most that will happen apparently is dogs will <laughs> get sick because of all the dead bugs they eat when they eat one of these things. You know, but this one was a fresh one. There was no bugs on it. So... It was still in the canister, and so that felt that felt good. That that was a relief, and um, but I know that this lost thing is still there. I know that that trigger is still there. Yeah. So that's what happened this morning, and then <laughs> I knew that I needed to come over here to Lindsay's and make a video, and just drop in and make a video. to expose all of this and make it public. Yeah. And and it was after that that I went to my that I went upstairs and saw the and had the experience of nothing nothing real. Not, like nothing is happening. Nothing is actually happening, which made me think of a, a section in the course at the beginning. I know I, I read a section to you guys before, or I shouldn't say to you guys, I say to myself, because this is all actually for me. These videos are actually for me. Yeah. Okay, so this is, I said this before, the course does not aim at teaching the meaning of love, for that is beyond what can be taught. It does aim, however, at removing the blocks to the awareness of love's presence. So that's what I feel like is happening all the time. And it comes in through...
through the puppies. It comes in through the fly strips. It comes in through weight gain. It comes in through clothes. It comes in through haircuts. You know, it, it, it comes in through all these. It comes in through Dylan. Let's not forget that one. There's high resistance to that one for me. So it comes in through Dylan. And that's why it's so painful when these things are showing up to show me my blocks to the awareness of love's presence. That's why it's so painful when I don't take advantage of the block that I'm being shown. I don't lean into the discomfort of that particular block. So leaning into the discomfort of this fly trap you know like who fucking cares it's the fly trap and that's I could stop there but there's something else being offered yeah there's something else being offered there so the end of this says love is our natural love is my natural inheritance the opposite of love is fear but what is all-encompassing can actually have no opposite. This course can be therefore can therefore be summed up very simply in this way. Nothing real can be threatened. Nothing unreal exists. Herein lies the peace of God. So this morning when I had that drop-in experience, actual experience of nothing is real, nothing is happening, I was like, holy shit. And it was when I saw Marie's little sign in the bathroom about the hypotheticals. When I was reading it again. Yeah, when you're thinking about the past, when you're thinking about something that isn't happening now, when you're thinking about something that hasn't even happened. And then it was like, boom. Nothing is happening. Nothing is ever happening. And that's where peace is. That's where my peace lies. That's the only place my peace lies. It doesn't lie out there. And Christine gets actually caught up that the form should look a certain way because then it's a demonstration of the reflection of my mind. So if, if I was doing well spiritually, then I wouldn't be gaining weight. If I was doing well spiritually, then I wouldn't have eczema on my hands. If I was doing well spiritually, then the world would look more peaceful. The world wouldn't look like a pandemic going around. The world, you know, there are those beliefs in there being exposed. And for the experience to drop in of nothing has happened, Nothing is happening. Wow. I mean, I knew I had it in here. Most, most, I feel like most of the course concepts, I, they make sense to me. They just make sense to me. From the, from the first time I picked up the course, it, it made sense to me. And I didn't understand how it made sense to me, but it all felt really familiar, which of course, And most of the time, I even am aware when there's a concept in my mind that I understand, but I don't experience yet. Usually I'm aware, yeah, I'm not experiencing that one yet. Once in a while, every once in a while, an experience will drop in and I didn't even know that I, I wasn't aware that I wasn't experiencing it. So... And t today, t today was, yeah, t t today wasn't quite like that. Today was, uh, I was pretty aware that I, I have not as of yet had the experience of nothing is real. I just know it in my mind as a concept. Now, now, now it's a back pocket experience. I've talked about those, the back pocket experiences. So that in the moment when I forget and I am in heavy resistance or heavy pain or heavy judgment, I whip it out. Remember? Nothing is real. 
nothing has happened. So the only thing I have to do in that moment is remember the truth and be really fucking honest about how I feel. Because you can't, I cannot skip over the feeling part. Everything needs to be felt. Yeah, everything needs to be felt. Mm hmm. Hmm. I think that's it. <laughs>